Hey all you people, welcome to the first Thirsty Thursdays episode of Auto Theory, where we, where we talk about what we think about when we're trying to sleep. We saw this really hard. It's okay. <laughs> I am already uh, three and a half tequila shots deep and we will be taste testing other alcoholic beverages while trying to talk about other car things. We will have one of these every first Thursday of the month. Our topic of choice today is the five best Family road tripping vehicles. It's funny how I'm talking about this while intoxicated. <laughs> family. Wow, family Don't drink and drive with your family, no matter what vehicle you're in. <laughs> First on my list, and perhaps most controversial, is the Toyota Prius. This is where everyone clicks off. <laughs> as disliked as this car is amongst car enthusiasts, you do have to admit that there's some serious bang for the buck going on here. Good. These cars are incredibly reliable, with many examples of them going well over 300,000 miles. Why is this chair so damn creaky? What does this do? Blast away. <laughs> and these cars' lithium-ion batteries last for well beyond what the predicted amount was at the release of them. For example, my grandparents have a 2004 Prius that they pre-order Prius pre that they pre-ordered in 2003, but they were back ordered for like six months because there were this poof car that came out, you know? Their Prius hasn't had a single gosh darn issue since they've had it. And the hybrid powertrain is still going strong. <laughs> they are comfortable with relatively stiff, but supportive seats, fairly roomy, and super, 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 super fuel efficient. So green. <laughs> squeak, squeak, squeak. Welcome to Squeak Thursdays. They also have a ton of cargo room, depending on which variant of the Prius you get. The Prius C, the Prius never lost my V. Prius. <laughs> if you don't mind looking like a stereotypical left-wing environmentalist, this could be the road tripping car for you. Next on the list is the Toyota Highlander Hybrid. There is still some question whether or not the hybrid is worth that extra bit of money over the regular combustion engine, but I think it's if you have it for like five, six, or seven years, seven years, something like that, then it's eventually gonna pay off if you buy it new. These cars are super comfortable, very fuel efficient for the class, super, super reliable because they're a Yoda, and they have three rows of seating where can you, where can you go wrong? They have- Where you can go Where wrong. you can go, where can, where you can go wrong? Three rows of seating. Actually, the third the third row here is where you can go wrong. where you can go wrong because it's not as as big as like let's say like a Sequoia or like a, like a Ford Expedition, Toyota Highlander crossover got all-wheel drive, plenty of traction in the winter time, decent amount of cargo room to haul your kitties around. When the third row seat is up, oh. there is not as much cargo room to fit all the stuff in though. But thankfully, the third row seat's pretty flexible and can be split. So you can just pack stuff in on one side and have like your little ginger kid in that little tiny back seat there. Another fantastic thing about these Highlanders is that, is that they have fantastic resale value. So now that we've got the Highlander out of the way, let's move on to something that's not Toyota. The Ford Expedition. Sp more specifically, I'm talking about the most recent redesign with the EcoBoost engine. We ran out of the Willy's Super Super Brew, which was delicious, by the way. I highly recommend getting some. So we're gonna try some Shipyard. If you haven't ever tried this, tis the season and you should. Ford Expedition. This is a seriously fantastic option if you don't haul a lot and constantly. If you don't haul a lot, because a anyway, smaller displacement, the engine's just working harder, the turbo's working harder, everything's gonna wear out a little bit quicker than a naturally aspirated higher displacement V8. That being said though, the EcoBoost designs have gotten a lot more efficient, powerful, and reliable over the past couple years. But like I said though, even though they have a towing capacity of 9 million, 10 million, they don't show to hold up over time. So if you're serious about towing, either get a diesel or that V8. Unless you do it on occasion, you know, just one or two camper trips a year with the fam fam. I was 
able to drive one of these down in Florida on a little bit of a road trip for a couple days. And seriously though, the, the Ford's put so much research and development into the sound insulation in, in their cars. It was a fantastically quiet ride. The seats were comfortable in the first, second, and, and third row. And the third row is one of the better third rows in the, the, the segment. To top it off, the acceleration that you get and the torque that you get from that turbo V6 is seriously great. I mean, it makes it feel like such a smaller vehicle with that torque. So if you're looking for something bigger that can tow in a pinch, Ford Expedition, go for it. Kevin, that was sip, that was good. You're allowed, you're allowed. You are allowed, quiet down. Okay, so fourth on my list is the Infiniti QX60. Typically, I tend to stay away from Nissans, but I had some first-hand experience with the QX60, and it is, it, remind, it reminds me a lot of the Toyota Highlander, both in styling, because everything looks the damn same nowadays, and in comfort. The seats are just so, so, so squishy. You sit down to them, you sink into them, and it's just like you're in it for the long haul. Long haul? What? The gas mileage isn't, isn't, isn't fantastic, but this vehicle has a fantastic ride quality, wonderful noise isolation from the road, comfortable seats, okay styling, and good brand recognition. People compare Infiniti to like a slightly worse Lexus, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the room is spinning with a third row seat and a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. It's fairly versatile too. I would expect okay reliability from the QX60, as after all, it is a Nissan, it's a Japanese company. They've had some issues with their CVT transmissions, and this one has a CVT transmission. They can't handle incredibly high loads of power running through them. If you tow something light occasionally, it's fine. But if you're looking for a towing vehicle, I suggest going elsewhere. Probably not towards a Prius. Last, but certainly not least, the vuln, the vet, the venerable Toyota Sienna. Vulner, vulnerable? Venerable. Vulnerable sounds like it could, and just, you know? The Toyota Sienna, incredible reliability since the beginning of the Sienna days. It's got the better, better gas mileage than the Expedition because it's lower to the ground, more aerodynamic. There's uncompromised roominess, especially with the front wheel drive version because there's no drive shaft running down the middle of it to have that middle hump thingy. You also don't have to worry about ground clearance with the Sienna because you're able to make the floor a lot lower to the, uh, the wheels. So, 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 uh, lastly, you have that optional all wheel drive. So the soccer mom slash weekend skiing moms can get their snow traction and their, you know, I have one more thing. And the Toyota Sienna still has pretty good resale value because it's Toyota, people know it's gonna last a while. Although not quite as fun to drive uh, and as you know, powerful as the, the Honda Odyssey, but who cares about the Honda Odyssey? They stink. They're actually the second best minivan on the market. And now for our honorable mention segment. Uh, <laughs> to finish my drink first. We have the Honda Pilot from starting from the early 2000s all the way up to the new ones. They're pretty powerful, they're pretty quick. Zero to, the new ones, zero to 60 under six seconds. The 1981 Ford LTD wagon. The Kia Sorento. The Chevrolet Tahoe slash Suburban slash Yukon slash. <laughs> and lastly, the Toyota Sequoia. Stay tuned for the next Thirsty Thursday in October. All right, we'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs> Not so handy car guy coming to you from the basement. Carl? You're a car guy.